What's up, everybody? So we've gotten two looks at uh, Book 9, kind of, right? More so Dark Angel models and, and a little bit about them, but glorious-looking models nonetheless. They'll get their own rambles once we get to see their bits and everything to see exactly how they go together, and I'll do a ramble that way. But through that, we got a bit of a sense of Book 9, which hopefully is coming sooner rather than later this year because it's been quite a long time to get all the legions properly and fully represented, not even counting models. So hopefully it's soon. But it got me thinking, right? Because the Inner Circle Knight Cenobium and the um, Dreadwing Interemptors, or I pronounce that, uh, look great, are fantastic, really fit into the whole vibe of Dark Angels. Uh, not just the Legion, but Dark Angels overall. And it got me thinking about some hopes, some wonders, and some um, fears is not the best word. Some concerns going into Book 9. Because this is uh, the Thramas War Zone, right? So it's some pretty intense fighting. We're going to see some pretty cool writings about the Dark Angels pre and post linking up with their Primarch on Caliban. And I'm really looking forward to learning about them. So I kind of want to share just my overall uh, thoughts and hopes for Book 9. As well as maybe some ponderings into the Dark Angels themselves a bit because this is a real opportunity here to get a nice fresh look at the First Legion without the Shroud of the Fallen weighing things down and covering things up. And aside from my th views on the Fallen, personal thoughts of the Fallen, it really is a shroud that weighs down the Dark Angels chapter, and that's by design. I'm not faulting it, right? The whole point is that it's this great stain and shame on their honor, and they're doing whatever they can to clean it up, and that's a fine plot point. But my issue with it is is that it permeates everything. Even when they're fighting orcs uh, on Piscina 4, you almost feel like if you reach your hand out, you could touch the cloth that is the fallen shroud, and 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 it's like it'll just start talking to you. It's just it's it's a weird way to describe it, but it looms. It looms over everything. Even in some of the Horus Heresy novelization stuff with the Dark Angels, it's almost like they're in the background going, "Remember, I'm here. This is what's going to happen uh, to us," and some of the foreshadowing and whatnot, if you will. And while that's fine for when you read up on the stuff that basically has Luther uh, consolidate his power on Caliban and getting himself ready for his heresy, his own little heresy, his own little traitordom. Yeah, it makes sense. But even outside of that, it permeates. And my biggest concern, I guess we'll get that out of the way, is that I don't want that shroud to permeate over Book 9. There is nothing really of use of doing the unnecessary over fan service there's always going to be fan service and there's no doubt going to be mention of some of, some of the pivotal characters in the description of the dark angels legion they'll no doubt be mentioned in the fluff it's kind of like yep remember these guys this is what's going to happen but that should be it just some name drops and that's about it i just don't want it to permeate this stuff too because this is a real chance to learn about what really makes the dark angels tick and we know already a bit of that, right? They're monastic knights, monastic warriors. That's how they're always described and look and feel a bit outside of their um, hunting the fallen. They're very duty bound, very taciturn. They shun fame and laurels. They they just they do their duty. Uh, they're very stoic in nature. If you're not one of the unforgiven post terrorists, you right, you are not somebody they're going to really deal with at all, or much less talk to. So it's. We have an understanding, right? They're very close-knit that way, secretive. They've always been. But now's a real chance that we get to dive deep, crack that egg open, and really see um, stuff without the blanket of the fallen shenanigans covering it all up. Now, yes, a lot of this is newer fluff that comes to light, and therefore Codex of the Past simply couldn't talk about it, such as the Hexagrammaton, you know, the six wings of the Dark Angels Legion. And the orders therein. I get all that. And it'll be great to see that stuff. But really, it's more than just the new. 
it's a chance to really give give them their flavor and their feel because with all this new stuff it really helps develop them and they are an important legion they are the first legion they participated in the closing stages of the unification wars they participated with the cleansing of the remaining thunder warriors alongside the custodian guard of the emperor they did not follow at all the same rank and structure of what the legions would do after them the first legion had its own unique structure laid out and then you know it also adopted the structure that the, the emperor would make for the legions the other legions as well kind of mixing the two together and even though other legions wouldn't truly follow the whole six of wings concept like the dark angels legion does and, and continues to do they would be weighed against the Dark Angels Legion. The Dark Angels Legion was the measurement that all other legions were measured against, and even in some way share some type of lineage with in terms of structure and organization. Um, in a way, it all goes through the Dark Angels first, the First Legion and stuff. Even things like the Alpha Legion and Space Wolves that really march the beat of their own drum can have some type of heritage sharing alongside the First. I'm not saying that, oh, the first is the best and the greatest and everything comes from the first for the other legions. It just merely is a metric that the emperor used to help create all the rest of his legions. It's, it's almost like a proving ground type thing. They were the largest for a long time. Uh, and they participated in a great many campaigns of which we know very little about because of their secrecy. So there's a lot to learn here about them. The very duty-bound monastic knight, monastic warrior type of concept without necessarily drawing specifically on a certain time frame or a certain culture, heritage concept from real world directly. You know, Teutonic Knights are a big kind of thing of inspiration for the Imperial Fists and the Knights Templar are kind of a big inspiration for the Black Templar, right? So, for example, but the Dark Angels is more so just the overall concept of a knight, an overall concept of a warrior, of a, of, of a monk, of a monastic way. And it's really going to be cool and hopefully intriguing to uh, learn more about that personally. And that's my hope, my biggest hope. I would love to learn about, and I think they will go into the six wings of the Dark Angels and so far as showing us their iconography, anything special in terms of coloration or anything that would adorn their armor. We know that the Firewing apparently has a special symbol that is very similar to the Consecrator symbol, so that might set up some uh, interesting parallels there, you know, right there. And on top of that, I'm really interested to learn about uh, where potential successors might come from, particularly for the second founding. Black Templars, again using Imperial Fists as the example, Sigismund is the first captain of the Imperial Fists. He is the first Emperor's Champion. His personal heraldry is the Black Templar's color scheme, basically. It all stems and makes sense and comes from there. And he leads the um, particularly zealous uh, of, of those that would be in the second founding, became the Black Templar. So there's other examples out there as well. I'm wondering if there's any of that for the Dark Angels second founding Unforgiven. Because we've seen artwork and pictures, particularly not so much um, more recently, but we've seen artwork and, and, and picturings of the Dark Angels with the classic bone white, beige white robes. But there's three other colors of robes from just the second founding and nothing really has been added to these colors. But in the second founding, we see a total of, well, including the Dark Angels, a total of four different color robes. We got the beige white. We have the dark green, basically the Dark Angels green color as a robe instead of armor. The Deathwing adorn themselves in this. It's unclear if they always have or if that's only when the Deathwing changed to be bone white. But on top of that, the Angels of Absolution, who've always been bone white, have the dark green robes. Which is pretty neat. Then we have the Angels of Vengeance, who are specifically called out as the second founding as maintaining the original Dark Angel Legion's color scheme. Really wish it, they and the Dark Angels themselves swapped color schemes because the Angel of Vengeance looks so good. Their black armor 
with black robe. So that's a whole another coloration of robe right there. And I have to imagine that stems from something. You could, easily, you could easily say it stems from the shame of the fall of Caliban or whatever, but I think it's got to stem from something before that myself. And what's interesting is their symbol is a red hood, a skull with a red hood on it, you know, wings in the background. But yet they are called out all the time as having black robes. So we see that red robe, however, on the Angels of Redemption, who are half green, half bone white. And I'm wondering if there's any correlation to Legion stuff, whether it's ranking, wings, specializations, or whatever, for those color schemes of robes, specifically. Um, and some of the Fallen pictures we've seen on some Warhammer community pages, and I think even in, in the Chaos Space Room book, although it could be mistaken, uh, is painted up models. It shows them with some different colorations of robes as well, and this is what sparked the idea. Also, I'm just wondering if there wasn't any correlation to begin with, because why on earth would Fallen have different color robes? So, I'm wondering if we might get some light shed on that, particularly because we know the Dark Angels classically have that bone white robe look going on. It's been described many a time that way. The Inner Circle Knights Synovium have kind of a crimson clad robe going on. So. What does that mean? Is that a particular order, or is that just the Knights and Obians robes in general? It just brings some questions to the table that, are, that spark ideas and hopes to see in Book 9. And all of this, I think, is more important than the unnecessary additional fan service of having fallen activity or the beginnings of fallen activity permeate through the Thromas war zone. As we know, that was maintained purely on Caliban. Will Luther be mentioned in this book? Oh, more than likely. Cypher probably as well. Maybe even Asmodai. But this is the Thramas war zone, and I hope it's just a mentioning of, hey, here are some example guys doing stuff. And um, we get to see the Primarch and, and uh, get to dig deeper into that. We get to see the Legion and have them dig deeper into that for us. It's one of my biggest things being a Dark Angel fan. I just want to see a real descriptor of them and capability-wise of them without it having to have the shroud of the fallen shenanigans laying over it in some way, shape, or form. And I'm really hoping that that's the case here. Uh, I'd love to see any type of symbology with the Dark Angels and any correlation we can make to their successors. Uh... You know, the Angel of Vengeance called their Terminator company Dreadwing. Is that purely a coincidence? But, you know, they were second founding. Did they just take that name and run with it? Or is there something more there that, that we can now extrapolate because of this book, right? It's a case of fluff, uh, new fluff, kind of reinforcing old fluff to maybe potentially a new direction. But that's nothing new, right? Um, we see it in Star Wars before as well. You know, when... And I use that because it's a common it's a common example most people know. You know, in episode five, when um, Darth Vader stops a stormtrooper from shooting at Chewie, who has on him at the time in like a backpack sack thing is C three PO, and then we learn a prequel, he built C three PO, and then it kind of became a reverse retcon potential situation where he remembers C three PO making him, and that's why he stopped the stormtrooper from firing whatever there's other reasons you know obviously you could say well that's not true it's this that and the other thing my point for bringing that up that example is i'm okay with stuff that happens after the fact kind of pushing establish things in a different direction a little bit because the fluff now makes more sense to go in that way in terms of logic or whatever so we'll see if any of the stuff like that happens symbology wise color scheme wise and what have you for for certain things robes in particular and the, the hexagrammaton. Anyways, what are your hopes for Book 9? Share it in the comment section below. Just want to do kind of a random ramble there of my hopes and concerns for Book 9. Really looking forward to it. It better come out sooner rather than later in this year. I don't want to have to wait till the fall, right? I want to come out sooner than that. Anyways, hopefully we'll see it soon. Share your thoughts. Thanks for tuning into this ramble of rambles. And until next time, take it easy.